Hey, so in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, the airplane's annual, and uh, it's going to be a little bit different video. There's not going to be any flying. I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, exactly what we go through when we do the annual, and some of the things that have happened to me in the past, um, maybe some cautionary tales, and uh, things that you can expect when you do an annual. So this time, the annual actually went really well. Everything was pretty pretty good actually in terms of how things went which is a relief because they don't always go good. I mentioned during the previous video that I've been working with Savvy Maintenance which is a maintenance management company and uh, basically Savvy uh, has recommended a shop they handle the scheduling and some other things like that. One of their uh, features is that they'll also assist you if you have something go wrong when you're traveling and fortunately I have not had to avail myself of that um, but in this case even just scheduling the annual they seem to have found a good shop locally uh, I moved to a new location in January of this year and so I needed to find a shop that I would I could have a trusting relationship with and this helped me do that so um, I have a pretty positive opinion of Savvy. I'll talk a little bit more about uh, them and how that works later on. The annual is not like your car's uh, inspection. If you, if you even are in a state where you have to do a car annual inspection, an airplane annual inspection is much, much, much more involved. Um, the seats come out, the uh, plates on the inspection plates all over the bottom of the wing come out. Uh, the tail, pieces, parts of the tail come out so you can look at every one of the cables. Uh, you generally like grease a lot of things, you change the oil, you pull the cowling off and look at the engine. In a retractable gear plane, you gotta pull the gear up. You gotta put the plane up on jack stands and pull the gear up um, and down and make sure that everything is working correctly there. It's a very detailed inspection. One of the things that you need to know is that, you know, an airplane is safe to fly and the annual is all about that. Um, because of the fact that so much work is being done during the annual. It's also a time when a lot of people have some uh, upgrades and things like that done. I didn't do that this year. I have in the past. Sometimes it's one of those things that drives up the total bill a lot. Um, strictly speaking, these are not necessary things, right? Like, strictly speaking, uh, the carpet is not an airworthiness uh, item. On the other hand, when you do the annual, Replacing the carpet, it's a great time to do it because you have to have all the seats out to do the annual. So uh, why not uh, go ahead and put new carpet out because you had to take the old carpet out just to access the floor of the airplane and look underneath. Uh, so there's been a number of questions people had about the retractable gear. So I think uh, there's an adage that basically you should not, uh, you know, you should not buy a retractable gear airplane to save money. And that's absolutely true. Like. Hate to say it, it's true. <laughs> um, just the inspection alone is gonna cost like a few hundred dollars more just to do that jacking of the airplane, uh, the labor involved in that. It, it, it necessitates jacking the airplane during the annual and, and swinging the gear up and down uh, many times and inspecting that it's act, in fact operating as it's intended to. Uh, so even if nothing is wrong, that part of it has to happen. Um, you know that so that's going to cost you several hundred dollars just because it's going to be hours of labor it's just it's all labor but uh even if nothing is found it, it it's 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 non-trivial um so you know you want to uh, allow for that the reason why you're going to fly over retractable gear airplane is because you like to fly retractable gear airplanes not because it's going to save you money <laughs> absolutely 100% don't buy a retractable gear airplane to save money <laughs> like you will go faster with less gas but uh, that should be appealing to you just by virtue of going faster with less gas you're not going to save money like you will the money that you save doing that you will definitely pay just for the inspection alone even if nothing ever goes wrong with the gear and things will go wrong with the gear <laughs> um, I mentioned during the last um, video that, that I had AirQuest did some work on the landing gear. So um, what actually happened there was before I moved, uh, a shop in uh, Nashua at my old airport, Infinity Aviation, uh, replaced the gear pump after I experienced, uh, for the second time in my ownership, 
the gear pump motor coming on. This is a sign of some sort of in internal hydraulic bypass. So it can be like O-rings inside the actuator. Uh, you know, it's a hydraulic gear system, so there's hydraulic fluid moving around and the gear is held up by hydraulic pressure. So if there's a little bit of a bypass leak where a little bit of oil, hydraulic fluid is leaking past those O-rings, um, then it's gonna go ahead and uh, start to uh, run the pump more often rather than just having the gear be held up by that pressure without needing the pump to run. And you'll see this in the form of the ammeter will kind of go like bloop, bloop, you know, back and forth. And if it's happening more than like once every 30 seconds or so, something is up. Um, so this happened to me once before, like in my first year of ownership, I think, um, and had the gear pump overhaul. This has happened again. So this time the airplane was managed by Savvy and uh, Infinity was the shop they recommended. No problems with Infinity. That was actually where I was, Infinity was the FBO where I was keeping my airplane before. And, um, they did fine work, however, uh, the shop that they sent the gear pump off to for overhaul uh, did not. And so the gear pump, um, while I was flying to Pittsburgh ferrying the airplane, um, and shortly afterwards I started to experience a situation where the uh, gear pump breaker would pop uh, like late in the retract cycle or the going down cycle. And you could always pump it down, but uh, clearly there was something wrong with the pump and it was replaced under warranty. So the new shop, AirQuest, sent the gear pump back to the overhaul shop and they went ahead and, and uh, replaced the gear pump uh, under warranty. But of course it's a substantial amount of labor, right? Several hundred dollars of labor just to remove the gear pump, jack the airplane up, test, you know, the gear operates satisfactorily when it comes back and all that. So, uh, you know, the gear is the source of headaches. Um, you know, related, I, I mentioned Savvy, like I think one of the things that's a little bit of a downside of Savvy is that what they don't have is they don't have, um, you know, they don't have type specific knowledge necessarily. So a uh, great example of this, the, uh, the Cardinal flying community is aware that this overhaul shop that Infinity happened to send the pump off to, doesn't have a great reputation. Um, it's called Aerospace Turbine Rotables. Uh, I think it used to be called Kelly Aerospace, or maybe I have that the other way around. But basically, they just don't have a reputation for doing amazing work. And uh, I didn't know until I read the invoice that that was who Infinity had sent the shop, to, sent the uh, pump off to. And they were the ones who did it, you know, nine years ago, right? And so uh, I feel like, you know, maybe. <laughs> Uh, the type specific knowledge there, I, I can inject that into the conversation with Savvy and, or, or cut them out and, and talk to a shop owner directly and I have, I have a lot of savviness in that myself. Every two years you get to do a pedostatic inspection to fly IFR. Uh, that's a $400 flat rate and that was done here. It's due in August so it's done slightly ahead of time. Um, but now it'll be on the cadence of the annual. Um, that inspection is uh, it's a check of both the transponder and the uh, altimeter uh, readout, uh, basically, uh, against calibrated info. So let me talk a little bit more about, you know, here's my actual invoice. And so, you know, give an idea about the total cost um, of the uh, annual. Oh, there's one more page required. Be right back. The base inspection is 24 hours of shop labor, and there's some parts that are involved in that. It's replacing filters and uh, things like that. Um, that ends up being like about $2,200. This covers a lot of things, right? Like, uh, you know, going through the ADs, the airframe inspection, the engine inspection, the propeller inspection. Um, an oil change is part of this and sending an oil sample off. One of the things they did was they did Blackstone oil analysis. Uh, that was requested by Savvy. I actually have a super high opinion of Blackstone for oil analysis. I think uh, they do an amazing job. And, you know, uh, I'm really happy that Savvy requested Blackstone specifically to do the oil analysis. Um, 
it is uh, they they do a really detailed analysis and they discuss the results and shared the results with me. So I've had shops do oil analysis before. It's also very common to cut the oil filter open and look inside. Uh, and you know, like they would send the oil off, but I would never see the results. And they were probably, you know, getting back something they were putting in their folder somewhere, but I never saw them. I supplied CamGuard, which I use in my engine now. Um, and uh, usually uh, it's, it's not, I believe it's not mandatory to do an oil change during the annual, but it, almost always you would do it because you want to drain the oil and probably cut open the filter and look for any metal. Um, ELT inspection, uh, one squawk that I had, which is that my, um, my uh, cylinder one uh, cylinder head temp on my uh, Insight uh, gem engine monitor was not, uh, you know, it was intermittently not indicating. So that costs uh, three quarters of an hour. So 62.90, which is very cheap as aviation things go. So um, this basically says that they replaced a ring terminal, uh, very simple uh, thing. So another thing here, uh, which was another squawk of mine, which is that sometimes the pilot side push to talk switch was uh, just not really like giving a good, um, you know, it was a little bit intermittent. Sometimes you, you could push really hard and it wouldn't quite come in or would be, I'd be reported that it was cutting in and out. So just replaced a new switch. It's a $5 part, amazingly cheap for aviation, um, 93 bucks of uh, labor, uh, or 93 total. So, you know, $80 of that is labor, basically an hour of labor. Um, I had considered possibly replacing the headliner panel, which I usually do by getting parts from uh, Vantage Plane Plastics, uh, and I can get a discount um, from the Cardinal Flyers Type Club. I decided not to do it. There's a little bit of a crack in the headliner. Uh, maybe I'll do it next year. I wasn't sure if they were gonna find a lot of things during the annual, <laughs> in which case maybe doing the cosmetic stuff is less appealing. Um, you'll see. Um, I had another thing go wrong on the flight up there. So actually the funny story is when I had the gear work done, uh, the, the, you know, the gear pump replaced under warranty. Uh, when I arrived, uh, I went to go close that little crank window on the pilot side and this pin dropped out of the uh, thing and the handle like came off of my hand, um, which was a little bit surprising. Uh, <laughs> And so apparently I have bad luck flying up to the shop because when I went to go uh, open the pilot side door, the handle was like not, it was like stripping off the thing on the pilot side door and just excellent timing because it would have been a problem to have that fail as a you know pre-flight item. Um, but in fact, it happened like, while I was flying up there. Uh, that was two, um, 0.8 hours of labor to, you know, take the door off and replace the handle uh, to give you an idea about that. So the part, uh, $486.94, which is a much more typical aviation part price uh, for the door handle. Um, so that was 728 bucks total to fix that problem. Um, one of the things they found was that the um, mechanical fuel pump drain tube was broken. So it was replaced um, roughly an hour of labor and almost um, negligible part cost. Uh, they recommend something called Corrosion X. Um, I've had Corrosion X treatment done roughly every two years since I've owned the plane. I think it's probably a good idea. Lots of shops recommend this treatment. Corrosion is a major problem for light aircraft, especially that don't fly that much um, or sit out on the ramp. So I don't, I have my airplane in the hangar now, but still Corrosion X is a really good idea. So basically what it is, it's like an oily stuff that they spray around inside the wings and it can leave a little bit of uh, ugly uh, leach out from the rivet holes and the seams in the wing, uh, which looks bad, but uh, it's not bad for the plane. Uh, the problem is that if I'm going to repaint the plane in the next year, then you probably don't want to do the Corrosion X part of that. Uh, it might cause the paint to not adhere quickly because it's kind of oily. So I elected not to do that. Um, the ELT or Emergency Locator Transmitter uh, battery was replaced. Um, did the pitot-static inspection, so this is required for IFR flight every two years. It was due in August, so it's appropriate to do it at this time. 
um, that cost uh, four hundred dollars is a flat fee. Looks like uh, that's how they charge it, which is totally in line with what I would expect uh, that to cost. Um, there are some various uh, ADs. A fuel strainer was installed, forty-five bucks. Uh, another AD was inspected. Uh, the fuel lines, forty dollars. So the total there comes out to three thousand nine hundred and forty-nine seventy-six. Um, 681.11 of that is parts and labor is $2,600 um, and yeah this is broken out by like oil and freight as well so um, and the airport itself actually charges uh, some fee it's like a tax um, so yeah uh, that's what your bill rundown looks like. This is a low annual for me, partly because I didn't do any uh, upgrades, right? In the past, I've often done some upgrades, but uh, also, you know, more things have been found before. And the shop that I took them the plane to in the past, I don't know whether, it's, it's really hard to tell um, if they were finding more things or just spending more time like it's pretty common that they would take a much longer amount of time to do the work and they would find spend like you know a few hours tweaking flat you know cable tensions and stuff like that um and it would be billed as a separate charge which really adds up to be like you know an extra thousand dollars or whatever right by the time you're done with all of these um it's hard to tell whether that is a real thing. Like, you know, were they overcharging me? I don't know. Um, you know, that's a little bit hard to tell. I think they did very good work. Um, I think this shop is also seems to have done very good work. So it's hard to tell if, you know, they're just finding uh, fewer things because the, the plane's been pretty well maintained in the past little bit. I've had annuals that were, you know, way up in the $10,000 range. Um, the sort of things that can go wrong, it can be pretty extensive. Um, you can have a lot of small things wrong. You can have a lot of uh, big things wrong. Yeah, the plane's been running great since I got back. Uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, the work that was done. It was done quickly and uh, really that's all you can hope for in this is to get the plane back in the air with a bill that's not uh, too ridiculous <laughs> uh, when it comes to annual inspections. Um, you know, two weeks of downtime is, uh, that's, that's very good. Um, I'm very impressed with that. So yeah, so to give a little bit of a wrap up of what, you know, give you a little bit of a wrap up of what the annual inspection is like. Uh, it's very detailed. You're gonna spend somewhere on the order of $2,200 just on the flat rate inspection. The shop labor rates are gonna, are gonna vary where you are in the country, uh, it might be cheaper. There's ways to save money on that. For example, if I had more time in my life, if I didn't have kids, you know, I didn't have work full time, whatever, uh, you know, if I was retired, I could go uh, be the person who unscrews every inspection plate. You gotta have a mechanic that you're gonna work closely with to do that. You know, you could do the oil change yourself, right? You could do these kinds of things yourself. You could take the seats out uh, and learn how to do it and you probably save like you know five six hours of shop labor just doing that kind of thing right like you're just gonna do five six hours of shop labor just to um, just to do the taking things apart and putting them back together and you could save that money by doing it yourself. So that's that's a lot of money, right? Like that could save you a quarter of the inspection cost. Um, and you know, it's, you're still gonna get just as good inspection because the licensed mechanic is still gonna look at the plane uh, all the time and so on, you know, to actually do the inspection. So, uh, so that's good, you know? I mean, I think that's an option for some people. It's just, in my case, it wasn't right like Butler's like an hour drive away so you know that's not really going to work out in terms of being able to go up there multiple days and, and, and do it even if I took several days off from work. I think this was overall a very positive experience like I said I, I'm super happy the way things worked. It can be pretty negative uh, you know I've had annuals some of the early annuals in the plane we had an engine 
problem discovered that required overhauling the engine, which is, you know, it's like half the price of the plane right there um, by the time you're done with it. And it can take a very long time, um, especially if you have to get a lot of parts in. I was super impressed by how fast the shop did it. Everything, they had the plane inspected in a week, got me the list of things that they discovered and got me an estimate and like they were right on with what the estimate was. In fact, they came in a little bit under the estimate in the labor, which is very, very impressive. I'm very pleased with that. That's not the kind of thing that's happened to me before working with other shops. What I've had instead is, you know, they would be, it would be three weeks and then they would be like, yeah, we're done inspecting it. <laughs> it's like, great, <laughs> plane's been down for three weeks, <laughs> right? And you know, uh, you would find that, uh, you would find then that they would start ordering parts and they would want money to order the parts and you go order the parts and the parts arrive like two weeks later, they've started to get them installed, they're wrapping it up, you call them up, you'd say, what's going on? Uh, you know, they'd say, oh, we found another thing while we were putting the parts in, like we're tweaking the flap cable, right? You know, this kind of thing. And so that was a much more, that was a much more frustrating experience. Uh, when you have these annuals that can last like a month, two months, that is really frustrating because the plane is, you know, you're, you've got the plane, but you're not able to fly it. So, um, and you know, there's going to be a big bill probably at the end of it. And you kind of wonder too, like, is the shop really working on it? Um, I think one of the things that was another real positive of Savvy is that they arranged everything so that like this plane was scheduled to come in on this particular day, a whole, uh, you know, three, four months ahead of time. And so like everything was all set. They were ready to start working on the plane right away. There was no sense of like, oh, you know, we've got a bunch of, you know, we got a bunch of balls in the air and and we're working on your plane when we have a chance to, right? Like that. that's not the way it was. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I think, uh, you know, I'm gonna be planning maybe some uh, more uh, cross countries in the next couple of weeks. So I might make a couple of videos around the planning of those, uh, a, a th like a three hour cross country trip back to New England um, and give you an idea about how we think about weather and planning for uh, something like that and, and fly it. So, uh, so yeah, keep, keep watching, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, um, you know, if you have questions, more questions about the annual and what to expect and, and uh, when things can go wrong, I'd be happy to share some more stories about that in another video.